So a lot of you know I've been here working in South America and something that's always interesting when I am at any sort of different property, um, but certainly ones in other countries where there's limited access to things such as vet care and there's far less knowledge as far as things like a balanced diet or even far less options, um, you know, as far as like pasture rotation or pasture maintenance or access to water or minerals or that sort of thing. And you find that whatever information has been passed down, uh, depending where you're at, there's either traditional ways of how they've always done things. Um, there's people who've come into horses, we'll say with a more modern approach, um, and are semi more aware of trying to become more educated. Um, but basic things as far as finding quality tack and equipment or finding halters or, just things that we tend to take for granted um, in many other places uh, winds up becoming a big deal. Um, veterinary care is a big deal. I've been here now a month, I realized the other day on Christmas, and um, I've been working on four different wounds on four different horses because you just don't have vet care access the same. I mean, there is a vet, but they have to cover huge amounts of distances and there's not you know, local stores where you can buy ointments and salves and medications and, you know, that sort of thing. You just don't have access to the same things. And so it really forces you to become creative. Um, today, I put together um, a from like four different bridles or what we would call bridles um, to create one bridle that could maybe semi fit uh, a horse that's been pretty troubled and pretty defensive and flipped over a few times on people and all kinds of good stuff. Um, looking at things like saddle fit, I mean, that's something that's like not even addressed, not even considered, not even thought of as far as when they see, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm uh, generalizing here for a moment, but when many people see bad behavior, certainly in areas like where I'm at right now, the first thought is not, does my tack fit? Like that is, that is not in the realm of things. Um, and you know, so it's interesting because when you come in with this perspective and exposure, especially in what I do, where looking at the horse's diet and, you know, the tack and the human relationship and the quality of life, as far as, is it sleeping and healthcare, you know, how's the teeth or there are there ulcers, you know, all these different aspects that go into what I see as the final outcome of how the horse um, interacts with the human, how they function on a day-to-day -day basis, how they live in the herd or wherever they're at. Um, so many of these things are just like never even thought of, never even considered, and sometimes not even really options depending on location, finances, or so on when you're at these these roommate, ro, um, remote places. Um, so you know, there's a lot of creative problem solving, like when there's no fencing and you have to work with horses. Um, there's, you know, things like less than ideal circumstances, working with this tiny little pony that hadn't been touched in 15 years or the youngster I've been sharing videos of recently where there's no halter that fits them correctly and you have to make do with what you have or get creative or come up with something. Um, and I think, again, it goes back to this theme of the more we humans could become adaptable, um, I think the better we would be for our horses, even if we have the luxuries of a tax store nearby and a veterinarian nearby and options for different, um, you know, uh, education within ourselves and awareness of, of to be, you know, better um, carers and partners for our horses. So you know, just maybe think about how many things you might take for granted, or even if you're frustrated because your vet is an hour out. Um, my last trip in Asia, the vet had to be flown in from five hours away, and the farrier was flown in from another country, just to give you some perspective. Um, there's not things like equine dentists or farriers. I mean, there are few and far between, but they like go to multiple countries, not just within one area. Um, so I was just thinking about it today because I've been working with a horse that was very aggressive and biting and kicking and rearing and flipping over and broke three different people's ribs and had all kinds of fun stuff going on. 
and thinking about first what was the mentality and the approach of working with her and how she was and of course she was you know uh titled the the crazy horse um but also you know when you don't have the education i mean you can understand and you can be empathetic to the horse but when you don't have the education or the exposure um or the opportunities to change up what you're doing how you're doing the equipment you're using and so on how do you work with these horses and how do you help them get to a better spot and i think that's one of the things that i enjoy in these situations is it forces me to go outside of not the comfort zone of, of my abilities but the comfort zone of like what i'm used to as having as options and being able to help horses have different experiences and even when it's not ideal, even when things aren't totally as much as what I'd like, you still can see huge changes in these horses um, and a softness in their eye and availability in their brain and a reasonableness in their body and behaviors. And, and you know, the biggest thing that always comes back to is what is the human intention? And when the human intention changes, everything about the interaction mimics that and so even if you have less than ideal circumstances i always encourage people to realize there's always opportunities for refinement there's always opportunities for improvement there's always opportunities to keep building that trust and that try and that horse based on what you're offering and how you're interacting with the horse even if you don't have access or options to all the things that you would ideally like to have during the interaction with the horse. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for joining me.